Hello friends, it's Angelina and Dima here from Walking Nature World. We're in Aosta, Italy now. Just finished the Tour de Mont Blanc trail and we're ready to share with you our impressions about it. We want to share with you our final thoughts and tips about this trail. So stick with us, it's going to be lots of useful information in the video. Let's begin! Tour de Mont Blanc is a very beautiful trail, but it's very challenging at the same time. There is lots of mountain crossing, so you have to be ready to hike up and down quite a lot. We ourselves underestimated the difficulty of this trail. We thought it would be easier in a way. We were ready for the mountain paths and stuff, but we didn't realize how high actually these mountains are. Because we come from Pyrenees, Spain, and there the mountains are lower and so we weren't quite ready for it but it turned out that we have to climb the peak of the mountain every other day or so so it is quite challenging for sure talking about the difficulty of the trail you have to be in a good physical shape in order to do it properly it's better to have some hiking practice beforehand at least several months before and better in the mountains if the mountains are accessible to you it's the best option to gain the hiking experience there if not, just walk a lot and do some leg training in the gym because for the legs it's very demanding and in that manner you'll be more prepared and the muscles will get used to it and it will be less painful for you when you actually get on the trail. Do not take too heavy backpack, go as light as possible. For the same reason, because there are some challenging parts in the trail where you wish you had less weight always. So make sure to dedicate time to pack light, it's very important. The total distance of the trail is 170 kilometers and normally you're able to do around 15 kilometers a day. And usually the official guides tell you the same. It was very rare when we did more than 20 kilometers a day because the trail is not that easy. And we don't recommend you to plan hiking big distance because again this trail is quite hard. And it doesn't make sense to do more because it's better to always take time to enjoy the places and be present rather than just run through them and don't see anything. It's not the same as with the Camino de Santiago for example when you get on the trail and it's more or less the same and flat all the way through and you can do bigger distances this way. Where it's important to be equipped well for this trail. The most important thing is having good boots or shoes. We had the trail running once and we were very happy about it. Because we find that for us the boots are not really working that well, they are too warm and hot and we have a lot of calluses from them, so it's absolutely impossible for us to walk. Even though the waterproof boots or shoes would be great because we had to cross lots of waterfalls, rivers and water streams, but if the weather is fine and warm the shoes will be drying up very quickly. So for us it wasn't really a choice, we love the running shoes a lot. Trekking poles also will be used Useful. We saw lots of people using them, most of the people actually, especially on the snowy or rocky uphills and downhills. We personally didn't use any trekking poles during this trail, but we felt like at least one pair of them would be useful for us as well. And after this mountain trail we are thinking about buying some, but some very lightweight of carbon material, because we are already taking lots of things with us, lots of electronic equipment, etc. So for us the weight is a big deal. Also because we are filming a lot, we need our arms to be free, so that we can hold the camera actually but for the regular people, not cameramen, it will be fine. You have to bring warm clothes with you as well, because the weather can change very quickly. Because the change from a sunny day to a thunderstorm can happen in a matter of minutes, and because of that it's very important to have good raincoats as well. As we always stay in a tent, we bring tent with us, as well as sleeping bags and sleeping pads, etc. But if you'll stay in a refugee house, it will be optional. Make sure to watch what we pack and what we take with us video that we previously released in our channel because there we show all the things that we take with us in our backpacks and we think it will be useful for a lot of people so make sure to check it out. We'll leave a link somewhere here and down below. We hiked Tour de Mont Blanc in the middle end of June and it was fine. We had several days of thunderstorms and rain but for the rest it was fine. Most of the days were fresh and cool and for the hiking it's the perfect kind of weather especially when you're hiking uphill because compared to the last days of the tour that we had they were very hot like 30-35 degrees Celsius and we were dying of heat. We think it would be close to impossible to do or you need to start the hike very early in the morning like 6 a.m. and then hike until 12 am and then it may be possible but otherwise it's too hot so the month of june is fine but just be aware of the snow there is still quite a bit of snow left in the mountains higher than 2000 meters it was quite a surprise for us to see so much snow in the mountains because again we come from Pyrenees and there are not so much snow but here because the mountains are higher and it's probably a bit of different climate there is more snow and we still remember the moment when we faced a snowy steep uphill it was uh, like our day two or three of the tour it was our first mountain climb 
and right away we faced it with the you know snowy steep uphill and it was absolutely crazy we were looking at it and thinking to ourselves that it is impossible to do and we even considered to stop the trail at this moment because we thought that most of the trail would be like that so that we have to cross the snowy mountains over and over again it looked more scary and impossible than it actually is up close we thought that it was possible to do there were footsteps of the people and they were making like hard ground for you to step on so it was quite doable so it was one of biggest challenges on our way when we faced and overcame our fears of the snow and as we don't enjoy walking in the snow that much if we knew that this is gonna be the case we would wait more until july august and do this trail in this season so just be aware of that if it's not the problem for you then go for it if not wait until the warmer season to come like probably july august and september are good Talking about our coming our fears, thunderstorms were a huge deal for us. They say summer is the season of the thunderstorms and they can happen very suddenly. So always check the weather forecast for every day of hiking. That was also one of the most challenging moments that happened actually on the first day of hiking when we were stuck in the thunderstorm almost on the top of the hill and we underestimated its power and how fast it is. First there were just some dark clouds coming our way and then it suddenly started to thunderstorm very fast, like in several minutes probably. And we we're absolutely not ready for that. We we're just on the side of the hill on our way down and basically we had to lay on the ground on the rocks, cover ourselves with our raincoats and it was scary to hell. It's probably one of my personal biggest fears when I'm in thunderstorm in an open space like this. And also in the mountains you never know how is it going to be long or short, is it going to be strong or not. So it was very scary. So in the end we were all wet and miserable and cold and in that case it was even worse because there was actually ice coming down from the cloud so it wasn't raining, it was ice raining raining so absolutely crazy so in the end we ended up being wet and miserable and cold but at least we survived fortunately we found the refugee house and the fire to dry up our clothes a bit so not to be stuck in a situation like this always check the weather forecast for every day and also if you see dark clouds coming your way uh, find any shelter or house or anything or some roof so that you can be safe as you know we were wild camping all the way through and in france it was best experience because they have clear rules you can camp almost anywhere for the night from 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. They even have special dedicated areas for camping in some places and it's amazing. It is called Air Bivouac. You can search it in the map. In Italy it's more complicated. They say you can camp lower than 2500 meters. It's not completely clear about day and night camping. Does it mean any camping or wild camping for a night is fine? It's not clear. Also there were signs crossing with rubbish and fire setting that we never do and we guess that is the reason why they are not allowing camping in the first place because just setting up a tent for several hours at night won't hurt nature much in our opinion and we do everything that we can not leaving any traces of course no garbage we just use our camping gas to cook our food and that is all so the common sense will help you and we camped several times in Italy and it was fine they say that there can be some forest rangers that potentially can find you but it didn't happen to us and we hope that it won't in Switzerland there is no clear prohibition have not seen it anywhere but we get that camping for a night and early leaving is fine there are campsites on the way but not everywhere the price are quite acceptable it's normally around 20 euros for a night normally less than refugee house our favorite campsites were camping hobo while when in italy and camping the glaciers in switzerland it's also an amazing place to stay talking about the refugee houses there are a lot of them they're almost everywhere some of them are very high in the mountains in very inaccessible locations some of them down in the valleys at first it was a bit of disappointment because we learned that they're quite costly and expensive and for one person you would pay for a dormitory room around 25 euros and knowing that there are campsites that charge you 20 euros or even 15 euros i think it's not fair to people we're expecting that there will be some cheap refugee houses also they don't allow to camp close to them normally especially in italy they were really strict about it for whatever reason it's just that you don't have a choice you either stay in the refugee house or you can wild camp but there is a risk that you will be fined and found by the forest rangers so we didn't like that the language spoken everywhere is english but also french in the most of the area also we noticed that in the region of Mont Blanc, switzerland the prices for the food in the supermarkets are very high and there is not enough variety not enough to choose from so we felt like we were paying triple the price for the bad quality products at least that was our experience for us it would be better to have our own dry supplies to not depend on that that would be a great solution we wanted to end this video saying that 
The places that trail goes are amazing. It's paradise for any photographer and videographer. You can shoot forever and have great shots. We enjoyed it very much and it will be always on our memory. Hope you'll have the best experience possible with this trail and our tips and advice were useful for you. Let us know about that in the comments below. Make sure to watch our 11-day series of the Tour de Mont Blanc trail. We'll leave the link to that on the screen. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more hiking adventure inspiration. Keep in touch with us on Instagram and Facebook and we'll see you very soon on our channel. Bye guys!